Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that will teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by Sam Mitchell, as well as his mom. Sam is a teenager with autism. Although he has chased, faced challenges in the past and still faces challenges today, Sam is a podcaster. His podcast is called Autism Rocks and Rolls, and he uses that platform to take the stigma off of autism as well as other conditions that people think are disabilities. So Sam and Gina, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Well, Sam, why don't you start off by giving a little bit of background about yourself? Yeah, so hi, I'm Sam Mitchell. I recently graduated high school. Yes, I do run a podcast as well. It's called Autism Rocks and Rolls. And it's about autism and how we cope with daily struggles that you may or may not understand. And I've done that since October 2019. I have over a thousand downloads with 271 followers. And I also have some sponsors, Wall Street Pain Solutions, along with many others. But we also, I was also joined a mental health news radio network as well. Thought you would get out of the way. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm Gina. I'm Sam's mom. He also, he said a thousand, but he's uh, nearing 6,000 downloads um, for his podcast. And yeah, his, um, Sam's kind of gone from a podcaster and he's now an entrepreneur and a business owner. Um, and, you know, he mentioned some of the sponsors in his, his network that he's a part of, and they're very, in, very integral in making sure you know, like helping Sam uh, pursue his business, I guess. Well, that is absolutely wonderful. As I told you, my son has autism. He's on the spectrum. He'll be nine this year. But let's talk about, I think my son got diagnosed when he was three years old. Let's talk about when Sam got diagnosed and how did you guys come to that and say, we need to do the test and what what kind of tests were done? Um, Yeah, so um, when Sam was... He was diagnosed when he was four, Um, but, you know, like we kind of saw signs. Um, I'm a a teacher. I've been an educator for 17 years. I I mean, I had kind of got into teaching a little bit late because I was a stay-at-home mom with Sam. Um, But as Sam was growing up, I had a little bit of training in, you know, like kids with abilities and disabilities. And being in the classroom for so long, I've seen... (laughs) everything. Um, but I've seen as far, you know, like I've seen abilities and a lot of disabilities. Um, but you know, Sam was doing like, he hated his routine change. He hated loud noises. He was like playing with his toys, but not really playing. Like he was sorting them. It was like in a really sophisticated way. And I just knew something was up. And so we put him in a, a preschool, a special education preschool, um, kind of on purpose, just so that the teacher could observe him and, you know, because he had had training um, in that. So he, within a week, he thought Sam was probably on the autism spectrum. And then um, we had him evaluated by an autism specialist, like a behavioral psychologist. And she diagnosed him through the school when he was four. And then as Sam grew up and you know, like with raising any child, um, there were times that it was um, pretty tough, you know, but we, we, we never really thought of autism as a disability. It was more of brain wiring and this is who Sam is and we're going to give him the tools and the resources and you know, it pretty much took a village to including him and he was, he's the one that really did it, but it took, a, it took everybody <laughs> to get him to where he is now. <laughs> well, he definitely has some of the behaviors as my son does. Let's talk about some of the challenges and either one or both of you can answer. What were some of the challenges that he faced besides the sorting the toys and the, the tough routine changes and the challenges that he faced in the past and that he currently faces now? Are they different or? Oh, yeah, oh, they're different. For sure. And 
one of my biggest differences is when I have no filter these days, I'll admit it. Well, I get, and I guess we I don't know of, with being honest or blunt. I guess too, with when he was younger, you know, like I, I don't know, really think that he knew that he had challenges. He was just him and things were hard. And, but yeah, I mean, when you have a child that's on the spectrum, like Sam just said, as time goes on, the challenges change. Um, you know, Sam is now an adult and now everything is shifted to, okay, now we have an adult son who has autism and, you know, you have to go like a certain route with that. So it definitely, definitely changed. Um, what kind of challenges do you have now? It's an honesty bluntness, the no filter. Definitely. I don't, I don't compromise. I don't do plan B's never have, never will. <laughs> Anxiety is a bad one. I got really bad anxiety. I'm not afraid to admit it. I'll, I'll lie to you there. I don't have bad sensitive feelings, but some stuff is really sensitive. Like I don't like wet clothes on me. Like sensory issues. Yeah, it's like a pinch, honestly. Yeah. And that's all I can think of right now. Well, and I know socializing and. Um, oh yeah, socializing. I, I thought you already mentioned that though. Well, with, you know, with Sam in his podcast, he does. I mean, he can communicate and socialize very you know really well in a studio but you know like it's just kind of the textbook classic autism he struggles sometimes in a group of people following the conversation and that's always kind of been a struggle with his but um yeah i guess those are some of the challenges that he has now well my next question is you have to eventually i guess let the child know that they might be different or they might be facing some challenges. How did you guys go about doing that? And when, when did you do it? Well, um, he was diagnosed when he was four and I would say between the ages of like four and seven was very, very difficult. Just, um, we really, my husband and I really didn't, he didn't, I didn't, we didn't really take him anywhere because he, he was so, Oh, I didn't know how he was going to act, what would set him off, what would upset him, if noises would bother him. And we, it, that was a pretty hard time. But finally, when he was six, my husband and I decided he needs to know because he was so frustrated because he would go to school and, you know, like his first, second grade year, he still remembers how awful it was. Nobody would talk to him and he was had to play board games by himself and it was it was horrible and um we finally when he was about six uh, i found a book called it's it's crazy but it's sam has asperger understanding asperger yeah that's what, like the character in the book's name was sam and so i didn't like preface anything i just read it to him and the whole time he was just kind of looking at me and then afterwards he just said i have this don't i cut, and I, I was like cut the crap <laughs> I said, yeah, I said, you do. I said, you do um, have this. And it just made so much sense to him. And I think that helped him just him being aware. Oh, okay. Like this is, you know, I am different, but we've always taught Sam that everybody's different. Like he's not any different than the next person. I'm different. And that's just kind of how we've approached it is you're no different than the next person because nobody's the same. <laughs> So, well, how did he make it in school? Because I know my son struggles with focus and he does a lot of scripting, meaning he just talks to himself, you know, that it could be complete quiet in the house and he's just going on at 90 miles an hour. Uh, did your son do that? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He, he taught, he still does. He'll, he'll kind of talk to himself and yeah. Like you do them too. Though. I've seen you. I, I do too. Yeah. I caught you several times. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do too. And and here's kind of my take on when, when kids, especially young kids on the autism spectrum are doing things that we as parents step back and say, okay, that's not typical. That, you know, we don't usually use the word normal because we don't, I don't really believe in a normal either. But if it's not a typical behavior as parents, we think, okay, they need to not do that. They need, they it's need so to dark. do they need to do typical things. But as he got older, I, I finally decided 
He doesn't have to do typical things as long as no, as long as he's not hurting himself and he's not being disrespectful. That was always a huge thing in our house was he's not, he, he cannot, that's just not tolerated for him to be disrespectful. And as long as he's healthy and comfortable with himself, I just never, I didn't care. He can talk to himself all he wants. Now, if he talks to himself in public as a 20 year old man, that's not appropriate. And so we had to really teach him, like, if you want to talk to yourself all you want, but just know when the time and the place is. So that's kind of how we approached it was like, I never really worried. I mean, I worried, but I didn't overly worry if he was doing something kind of odd. Well, how did you guys explain to other people that he has some challenges? Because I know my son, he'll be playing with people and then out of the blue, he'll say, I don't like you and you hate me. And they think it's weird because they're just sitting there playing. And all of a sudden he just buses out with this stuff and it, it kind of puts them off. So how did, did you guys have to face that challenge and how did you have to let people know that, Hey, there are some issues there. Um, we basically told them yeah. and I basically was like, Oh, I still have those moments. Even when I'm like 18 still, I still have those moments. I'm like, Oh shoot. I apologize. Probably should have approached it differently. Try to like, I jokingly weasel my way out of it. Like, you know, he's I have autism, blah, blah, blah. Dice, dice, four, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think it's just education. I think it's in that moment you say, you know, you know, I apologize if anybody was offended, but, you know, my son has autism and sometimes he can't help that. And I think it's just that power of that power of education. But then yeah, I'm going to apologize too, though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But but then I think sometimes that I think that's kind of like in society. I think that's just that stigma and that negativity with autism. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know how it, it's almost like you do have to teach your children autism or not, like how to behave in public and how to be respectful. But I also think there's room for everybody. I think there's room for everybody's quirkiness. And I know I'm weird. I mean, I'm really weird and I don't care. <laughs> and I raised. No, she dances 24 <laughs> seven, believe me. And how old are you? Hey, we're not going to talk about that. Oh yeah. That's right. You're 50 years old. <laughs> no. So I don't know. I just, I guess maybe when Sam was younger, I did, I did worry a lot, but as he got older, I was just like, you know what? I don't even, I don't even care. Like Sam, Sam, I'm me. And we're just, we're going to be ourselves. So, but yeah, I, we did have to explain sometimes, but we never cared to. It is what it is. I mean, he has autism and that's just a little piece of him. So. Well, speaking of being younger, did Sam ever get on medicines when he was younger that he outgrew and had to switch up some medicines or increase because he would go back to the same behavior that the medicines was supposed to help. I've been told that by parents that have older kids that they cannot grow the medicine and you might have to switch up some stuff. No, um, I have, I've, haven't outgrown any medicine. I've had food allergies, but I haven't outgrown them either. So I've outgrown, I haven't outgrown anything. I, I need Adderall. That's my biggest medicine that I need is Adderall. Otherwise I get too anxious and it's awful. I'm not mentally there. There's no, no one opens the door typically. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much But I could take other like allergy medicines, but that's it. The Adderall he started when he was in fourth grade and we tried several before that. And, you know, it was either making him like having an adverse effect where it was, he was like way too hyper or it was making him not eat or it was making him way too groggy. So um, I know Adderall kind of has a bad name because a lot of people are like, it's just legal crystal meth basically, or like legal cocaine. Um, it's kind of in the same category as that, but on the flip side of that, when you have, you know, a child that's getting all D's and F's and can't function in a classroom, and then you find this medicine and then he goes from that to like an AB student and his teacher's like, we found the one. Don't ever take him off of this. I mean, if, if I had to have cocaine in my body to help me, then so be it at this point. It's it's not cocaine, but that's what a lot of people that like are against ADHD medications 
that's their argument is why are we giving our kids this? But you get to where you I like to talk to that person. You've got to help them. Like you've got to you've got to help them function. So his medicines really haven't altered too much as the years went on. Well, let's switch it up and talk about the Autism Rocks and Rolls podcast. Tell us about that podcast and what made you start the podcast. How can people listen? Yeah, so I started in October 2019. I did it after I joined my high school's media club. And I loved it so much there at my school's podcast. And I didn't do it all. I had some help. But I decided to start my own afterwards because I knew I was going to graduate soon. And I know I couldn't come back to school like after senior year. They just won't allow it. I've tried, believe me. So that's when I decided to make my own podcast and start Autism Rocks and Rolls. So I don't let my cool thing or my thing that I've done, uh, the thing I love so much, die out on me. Well, are there any projects that you guys are working on and any upcoming projects that people need to know about? Yeah, actually, we can share some of that. So we're working with someone who is actually here like a few minutes. We got to get off and talk to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we got to talk to him. So he's going to help us with set up a little documentary or a little friend video on how to make friends for autistics, I guess is the way to put it, or people on the spectrum. And another one would, another one would be from at, there's a equine therapy place at, in our local area. It's called PALS, People and Animal Learning Services. I'm going to do an experience there with the horses. So we're waiting on that next month. So those are the only two big projects I can think of at the moment. Yeah. And we, you know, we're constantly keeping in touch with all of his sponsors excuse me, Sam has about 13, 14 sponsors for his podcast and that, you know, they're just, they're awesome. And we're always kind of keeping in touch with them. Um, and yeah, the equine therapy project, um, Sam has a really big guest next month that we're kind of prepping for. Um, it's WWE wrestler Mick Foley is going to be on Sam's show. So we're really pumped about that. Um, so, so we, we have little, little things here and there, but, um, we got big things coming up. Definitely, definitely keeps me busy. <laughs> yeah. That is great to be interviewing Mick Foley. I just got a couple of more questions for you. The first is what kind of therapies did Sam participate in to kind of help with his autism when he was younger and maybe even now, uh, counseling, but not as much counseling now. It's kind of kind of always done self therapy for myself, really. Not a lot of therapy and speech therapy. That's actually a big one. I probably should have done. I did speech therapy for a long time, like my whole school year, learning how to do social the correct way, what society wanted, but I don't get it sometimes. And OT, which is occupational therapy, just learning the basic stuff like tying a shoe and trying to figure out how to handwrite neatly. That was in the earlier years. Yeah. yeah. The, the speech therapy was very, very valuable with receptive because expressive language, he's fine. Like he can express himself very well, but receptive language, you know, like the processing and the, the kind of the um, context clues and the clues coming in when, when he received things, that was kind of tough for him, but he does have a life coach right now and just taught, he, he's, he's had a couple of counselors just to talk things out. So um, that's, Sam's a very good self-advocate for himself. You know, I'm, I've got his back and I'm his number one fan, but I try to really step back a lot to try to let him figure things out on his own because I think that's important. Well, that's wonderful. Go ahead and throw out the contact information so people can contact you and check out your documentary when it's completed. Well, it's not going to be long, but it could be like a short friend video. So where you can find me is Podbean, Spotify, YouTube, but if you look at my website, it has everything from my, my contact info to the guest I've had. It has everything on there. It's autismrocksandrolls.com. And yeah, he has sponsorship if anybody's interested in sponsoring Sam. Um, Sam also does podcast coaching. So he um, has, he's been hired a few times for that so far. So that's and trying to get into public speaking. Public speaking. Uh, ads, he sells ad space. So yeah, everything's on the website. That's a really good place to start. <laughs> Absolutely. Sounds like you're definitely doing great things. Give us some final thoughts um, from both of you guys before we close it out here. Anything that you want to say and kind of let people know about autism? 
well, I just want to say thank you for having me on, first of all. And it's been it's been nice meeting you. Yeah, you the same. We really appreciate Sam getting to spread his message. And um, I, I guess I would say, too, is as far as autism and society, you know, Sam's always been on a mission to show people that he isn't broken. Um, he doesn't need to be fixed. He doesn't want to be fixed because there's nothing to be fixed. Um, so that's just I, that, that's what I always try to tell parents, especially parents that maybe their, their children are newly diagnosed and they're freaking out like I did. Um, but in the long run, it's really okay. It's really, it really, really will be okay. And that's what I was um, try to try to tell people, I guess. So ladies and gentlemen, be sure to visit autismrocksandrolls.com. And if you are an Android listener, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app. And be sure to follow, rate, share, and review after listening. Sam and Gina, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. It was very nice to meet you. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream. Dream.